I'd love to know what, if any, types of negative experiences possibly have your patients had, if any, with the oral sodium phosphate prep drink. Have you encountered those? Yeah, and that's why, why I kind of searched for an alternative because there was a period where I had probably within two weeks I had three people with uh, severe dehydration, nausea, vomiting from the oral preps and uh, I felt that there's, there needed to be some other way to, to do the bowel preps on these patients mm -hmm. to avoid that and uh, fortunately with just uh, serendipitous that Suzanne came along right around that time. Right at that time. Yeah. And um, these particular patients, did you find a certain theme as far as age or prior health um, yeah. constraints possibly? Most of them were older. Um, most of them were women, mm -hmm. and uh, in general, they, they kind of described themselves as, you know, a very sensitive gag reflex. A lot of them had pr had prior colonoscopies, so the bowel preps had become uh, something that they, at times, had even you know not come back for their follow up visits because of uh, of the symptoms they pretty much predicted would happen. So if they needed a colonoscopy five or ten years later, they weren't going to come back because of the bad experience the first time around. Right, of an experience. Um, so the common things that you hear in those types of cases are what, as far as symptoms? that they oh, The worst is nausea, right. and you get the calls at 10 o'clock at night, I can't finish my prep, and then you got to send them out to the drugstore, their husbands, and they got to go and purchase some other laxative. Uh, and frequently the next day, that if they do show up, the prep is not good, or you know they come in dehydrated. They can't start the IVs. Uh, there's a lot of other issues there. Mm -hmm. They don't feel well after the the uh, colonoscopy.